Uh, back to another album review. Today's review is on Toxicity by System Up and Down. It's the second studio album from System Up and Down as a follow-up to their self-titled debut album. The album was produced by Rick Rubin and Darren Malakian, and co-produced by Serge Tonkian. It was recorded between uh, 2000 and 2001 at Cello Studios in Hollywood, uh, mixed by Andy Wallace at Enterprise Studios in Burbank, and mastered by Eddie Schreyer at o Oasis uh, Mastering in Studio City, California. It was engineered by David Schiffen with help from uh, Darren Mora, Greg Collins, Al Sanderson, Ryan McCormick, and Jim Champagne. The album was released on September 4th, 2001 on American Recordings and was manufactured by Columbia Records. Now, the band decided to do more experimentation this, uh, with this album by incorporating elements of progressive rock, jazz, folk, Armenian music, and Greek music. The lyrics of the song discuss various themes including uh, the CIA, drugs, mass incarceration, police brutality, the environment, uh, scientific reductionism, and groupies along with other shit. The album itself touches upon various genres uh, ranging across hard rock, art rock, uh, heavy metal, new metal, alternative metal, progressive metal, and even avant-garde metal. In recording this album, System of a Down recorded 30 songs in total, but it narrowed it down to 14 for this album. The rest will go on their next album, which I'll talk about in the next episode. Uh, now let's talk about the songs on this album. The beginning of this album is Prison Song. The lyrics are about mass incarceration in the U.S. or drug possession. Serge Tonkin mentioned that, uh, that a lot of Americans are in jail for possession of marijuana, which we can all agree is fucking bullshit. He also said that incarcerating drug addicts instead of sending them to rehab isn't really solving anything, and I agree with that. He also said that the CIA uses uh, drug money to rig elections in other countries, which is something that I will not argue with. Now, the next song is Needles. The song is infamous for containing a lyric that almost caused the band to split up. The lyric is, pull the tape around my ass. I read, about, read all about this drama on Loudwire a few years ago. The lyric was changed to pull the tape warm out of your ass. And I think it's for the best that it was changed. At that is Deer Dance. It's about the protest that surrounded the 2000 Democratic National Convention. We followed up with Jet Pilot. It sounds like this is meant to be an anti-war song. It's followed up with X. The lyrics contain the line, we don't need to multiply. This makes sense given the fact that planet Earth is overpopulated as it is. Uh, next up is the band's most popular song, Chop Suey, which was released as a single on uh, August 13th, 2001. The title was originally going to be called Suicide, but Columbia Records uh, needed them to change it, uh, or, or, you know, because it would have been controversial had they not changed it. It was met with a different controversy after 9-11, and it was on the list of songs that are temporarily banned from being played on the radio. There was a music video that was made, and I'm including a link in the description. Up next is Bounce, a song that's about group sex, in case the lyrics didn't give that away. What comes next is Forest. Based on the lyrics, this is an environmental song. It's followed up by ATWA, just an acronym for, for Air, Trees, Water, Animals. It's one of the more experimental sounding songs on the album since it ventures into art rock. Perhaps the strangest thing about, about it is that the lyrics are about Charles Manson's views on the environment. You follow up with Science. The lyrics of the song discuss scientific reductionism. After that is Shimmy. I will say this is one of the more memorable songs on the album. Next up is Toxicity. So it's released as a single on uh, January 22nd, 2002. Of course, this is the title track for the album. There is a music video that was made, and I'm including a link in the description. Uh, up next is Psycho. The lyrics are the song about groupies saying that they can lose their fucking minds and they get close to certain artists, up close and personal. Then again, the lyrics also mention cocaine. Now, the finale of this album is Aerials, which was released as a single on June 11, 2002. A lot of people say this is one of the band's best songs. The music video is made, I'm including a link in the description. 
What's interesting is that there's a hidden bonus track called Arto. If you're just Arto, I can't pronounce his last name. Anyways, uh, the song itself is an adaptation. Of, well, it's an adaptation of the song uh, Dura Vagmoria. You know, it's Dura Vag Vagormia. Yeah, that's it. It, it translates to uh, "Lord Have Mercy." So well-known church hymn from Armenia. And it makes sense why a system of a down went through with this. Well, I should mention that the Japanese version of this album has a bonus track called Johnny. And as you can see, uh, my copy does not have that bonus track. I really should have gotten the Japanese version because Japan is always keeping the good shit. In order to promote this album, System of Down were planning on uh, having a free concert in Hollywood as, on September 3rd, 2001. However, it was a disaster because of overcrowding, which resulted in a riot, along with $30,000 of equipment being destroyed. On top of that, six people were arrested. System of a Down later went on tour with Slipknot at the end of the month. October of 2001 was when an incident occurred in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where a sheriff where Shavo Odajian was harassed and beaten by guards uh, while attempting to go backstage. He did receive medical attention and later sued uh, uh, Duhadway Kendall Security, which is the company that the guards were working for. Honestly, the guards were total cunts of what they did to Shavo. You know, when doing my research, I read the album peaked at number, one, at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 and was certified six times platinum by the RIAA. And it sold over 6 million copies. Red the album was met with high praise from critics. What surprised me is that Pitchfork gave the album an 8.2 out of 10, and Rolling Stone magazine gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, you know, granted, both those companies are the worst music publications of all time. As for my opinion, I think this is a major improvement over its predecessor. The previous album is not a bad album by any means. But System of a Down managed to expand upon it and experiment more this time around. I really like when bands experiment with their music. Now, I strongly recommend this album, and I'm going to include it in a future video of the best albums of the 2000s. And now it's part where I question you. Have you listened to Toxicity? If so, what do you think about it? What's your favorite song from it? What are your thoughts on changes that had to be made to certain songs? Let me know in the comments. If you like the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to press the notification bell to notify of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with another video.